Welcome to the Tennis Hackery Podcast. This is the place where we discuss all things about tennis that relate to the fundamentals, fitness, and the mind. And of course, how technology can help. Uh, we are a group of San Francisco Bay Area based tennis coaches slash geeks slash aficionados. My name is Tarun and I have Soham here with me. Hey, Soham, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Yep. All good. Uh, I think we've taken a couple of weeks break at least and we're getting back to it. So yeah, hopefully let's have a good episode today. Absolutely. You know, we are now double digits in the episodes, episode 11 here, and uh, I'm excited to talk uh, with you guys and of course yourself, Tarun. Uh, we're missing uh, Alex Porda and Craig Lazarchik because they're busy. It's Sunday, you know, they have their, their tennis directors, they're busy, and they will surely join us for the next uh, few episodes. But uh, we are uh, going to say hi on their behalf to, to all our listeners and viewers. Absolutely. And again, let me get started with the marketing spiel. We are at Tennis Hackery with a Y on Instagram, Facebook, uh, on YouTube channel, and of course, Spotify. We are also on uh, X, which used to be called Twitter. So uh, again, our handle is at Tennis Hackery with a Y. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. It really helps. Uh, it really helps us uh, reach a lot of people and you know feed the algorithm. So we are actually pretty active on Instagram. Uh, Soham posts a lot there and you know it's it's been brilliant to see the follow account grow but we really need more followers absolutely couldn't agree yeah. with you <laughs> I was, uh, I've been uh, talking uh, with a bunch of my friends and you know tennis lovers as well at various you know locations whether it's like a league setting or a tournament setting and they're very very uh, curious to know what we're doing uh, of course you know we are growing I uh, would love to see uh, more people join us, subscribe to us, uh, listen to us. That way we can reach to a wider audience. And we are super excited to be bringing in some guests in the next few weeks. Uh, they will be revealed on the day of our uh, episode. So definitely stay tuned uh, for more exciting content. Absolutely. All right, let's get started with this episode. So this episode is more about uh, competitive play in tennis. Uh, we This is more we are probably going to go more on the advanced uh, competitive layer, uh, level player, uh, their experience with tournaments versus team or, or you know, league play. Uh, this is actually piggybacking on Soham's uh, recent experience playing at the Moraga Open, which is one of, uh, it, it's a very high level tournament. Uh, just, I'd just like Soham to take this off. Soham, how was your experience there? Uh, it was humbling. I think that's the best, <laughs> that's way, that's the best way to, ex, uh, you know, describe yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, fantastic experience. It's kind yeah. of uh, inconvenient that it's during the week. Yeah. So uh, I had to take half a day off uh, on Tuesday to play my singles match. Fortunately, the uh, doubles was in the evening on Wednesday, so it wasn't too bad. But I, I know I can't. You know, it's you have to see it to believe it. The level was insane. In fact, I've been following uh, the the results throughout the week, the finals days today, and. The, the men's singles, men's doubles, women's singles, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. And uh, the level is uh, incredible. To, and I, I believe all budding um, junior players who want to play uh, at least college level should yeah. be present to watch some of these exciting players. Yeah. Most of them are super young. They are either just about to go to college or just in college or a few years, you know, or about to graduate. And uh, it was a phenomenal experience, both men's, women's, right? Mm -hmm. uh, singles, doubles, mixed, everything. So it's uh, just to be accurate, it's called, it's at Moraga, it's held at Moraga Country Club every year. Um, last year I played doubles there only. Uh, it was like, I believe it was 12,000 uh, open. And when, I, when the money is actually distributed uh, across the various, uh, you know, divisions like singles, nice. doubles, everything, right? So it's not 12,000 for the winner. So it's, uh, I think the ten semifinalists and above get respective prize money of the different divisions. And this year it was 25,000, the Bright Work Open. It's actually called the Bright Work Open, uh, mm, held at Moraga. And, you know, there are many players from St. Mary's and NorCal, SoCal, uh, phenomenal tournament, great experience, and happy to answer any questions uh, on on my matches, uh, <laughs> on my on my experience being a spectator there, 
<laughs> and also meeting a lot of people yeah. that I know or have seen or, you know, people who I would love to interact with at, uh, at, yeah. in the future. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So this is one big thing that a uh, big difference. So I used to play a few, you know, uh, NTRP level tournaments. I played four or four, five tournaments like for a few years back. And I do see a big difference. So of course, uh, I'm more active in the league league play, you know, this is a, which is the UST adult leagues. Uh, leagues are amazing. It's an amazing way to play tennis, you know, socially stay engaged and, you know, f uh, play together as a team. But I think the Viber tournaments is completely different. So, I mean, Speaking for myself, I mean, I have seen some serious players come there. I mean, I mean, you see, like, when you watch professional tennis, you'll see a Nick Kyrgios, you know, come with headphones and go. I have seen this. Four level players do this. And like, and they are extremely focused. And when you, when you, when you strike up a conversation, you know, you get to see, like, how passionate these people are. And, and many of them really train hard. I mean, I'm talking about the lower levels. So Soham plays 5 and he's probably UTR 9. I mean, he can tell you at that level also, and I'm, I'm sure you could see you know, a very focused and serious crowd, right? Absolutely. You know, yeah. when you, the aura around uh, the yeah. area, around the tennis court with all these players is completely different. The vibe is, you know, everybody's serious, dedicated. Everybody's like, you know, really into tennis uh, because they yeah. either yeah. want to play futures, challengers, or, yeah. you know, maybe try to go pro. I mean, there have been many players, you know, who have, um, I think Matthew McDonald might have played that. I, I don't remember. Craig, Craig, I think, would be able to uh, tell you more. Yeah. Uh, Alex Puda, who's who's part of our tennis hackery team, uh, she went to St. Mary's and uh, she she's played at, 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 this, uh, at this Open too. So there's a lot of great players and potentially it's a, it's a great place for scouting too, um, right. for for leagues, for college, whatever it is, for, you know. Um, overall, like you said, these kind of these players are very, very serious, dedicated, and they're genuinely like uh, there to uh, compete. You know, uh, they're hardworking people. Most of them, they're all, you know. So this year, there were 128 in the main singles draw. That's that's a huge draw. That's a massive draw. Uh, so it started with around the 128. And then, of course, 64, 32, 16, 8, and then the semifinals, right? And they were all the all the seeded players. Mm -hmm. uh, they were like 20 plus seeded players or something. Um, we're all at least high five or low five, five minimum, probably five, five. Mm -hmm. And most of the seeded top, top 10 seeded players were probably six or level. When I'm talking about NTRP ratings versus yeah. UTR, yeah. Um, the top 10 were nothing lower than 11.5 UTR at least. Most were probably 12s. And I think the top seed was 13 plus UTR. Mm -hmm. By the way, the top seed did not win the tournament. He lost in the semifinals. Uh, the second seed played the third seed in the final and the second seed won. So the seedings was pretty appropriate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But exact. So, so to your point, uh, Tarun, I know you have played in TRP four or four five level. This is this is something different, honestly. It yeah. almost yeah. seems yeah. like Open semi pro go up to this tournament. Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, and it's it's just crazy the level, the the pace with with which they hit with, the incredible footwork, fitness, the men mental aspects of it too uh everything and you're playing sometimes you're playing multiple multiple matches a day and that's where fitness comes into play a lot and everybody's yeah. super fit you know and uh that's what that's what it is that's the big difference between tournaments and leagues because in tournaments you you might have to play multiple matches a day yeah in yeah. leagues uh that's rarely the case yeah you might be in several teams yeah. And yes, you know, you might have to play one in the morning, one in the evening, and then one next day. But I think in tournament, it's just different level, right? Yeah. So you have to be tuned in. You have to have the correct routines for preparation, post-match, pre-match and post-match. Yeah, recovery. And just important. generally know how to recover after a yeah. match because you might have a tougher match in three hours. <laughs> yeah. So did you have to play multiple matches a day or how was it for you? Uh, unfortunately, I was not. I was not good enough to win my first round match because I, being being a UTR nine and playing a UTR twelve point five, who uh who was a prodigy kid by the way, 
uh, before. I think he went to Patrick Mortogolo too. So he's 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 known. There were multiple YouTube videos of him. So I just kind of figure out how to dissect his game, even though I probably don't have the capability to. Oh, so you actually scouted him before? I I oh, scouted him on YouTube. Yeah, I looked him up on YouTube. That is amazing. Yeah, that you yeah, see, that's the level there. of detail that it needs. I, I, I mean, well, I mean, good. you have to do you have to do a little bit of homework before you play such uh, before Absolutely. you play open level tennis. Yeah. Uh, yes. Whether or not you're capable or not, I think a little bit of homework is necessary. Absolutely right. Yes. Uh, you have to prepare. Uh, you mean it's it's kind of expensive. <laughs> I mean, I paid eighty five dollars for singles and fifty five for dubs, so it's not cheap. Uh, so you're not just going there to just have fun and be like, oh, I was here and I, I am, uh, it, uh, checking off, you know, ticking yeah, off one of the to -do not, things. Yeah. It's, it's not about that. It's like, I'm there to compete. I'm there to go for the win. Right. Yeah. So yes, I did a little bit of homework. Obviously I was not successful in winning, but I think I played pretty well given, given the, the level of opponent that I had to face. Uh, and uh, I had doubles the next day. It was, I think, the round of 64. And my partner and I lost too. But I think we, we that, that was a combination of us having to wait two, two hours because the courts were not available. And I know it's the same with the opponents as well. But it kind of takes you away from that yeah. thing, right? Schedule, upsets your schedule a little bit. It was a night match. I don't think we were as tuned in as we would have been, maybe. Otherwise, so we lost. Uh, we lost in two, two sets, uh, straight sets. But it wasn't terrible. But I think definitely we could have done a few things better. So um, that's where it was. I didn't get a chance to play two matches, but I believe in my fitness. So I think if I had, if I was good enough, then yeah, I would be ready to play two matches a day. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so um, so. Let's uh, so talk talk us through your, your your singles match. So, what's the name of the player, uh, and how did the match go? I mean, how did you feel? I mean, what was the level of ball striking, and you know the difference in level. You said you were a UTR nine, and he's UTR probably twelve. Yeah. So what is the difference in level that you experienced? First of all, it was a nine a.m. match, and I actually like morning matches myself because okay. you know you're fresh, you've had the rest. Mm -hmm. And it's morning match, and uh, you know, um, I I enjoy the location. I've played there before. I like the courts, so it's not like, oh, the courts were not suited to my game or anything of that sort. Uh, everything was as good as it as it can be in terms of the setting and the environment, right? Uh, there are also some fans, by the way, which is great because I think yeah. that energizes you a little bit. That people are watching, you feel a little bit more excited, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Overall, um, we're warming up. I felt like. Yeah, he 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 he's a high level player. Everything was in the five minute warm up that we had. Everything was deep, consistent. He was uh, Jan Silva. Is he was UTR twelve point five. He's he's uh, he's from Sacramento State. Um, he's currently going there, and uh, he he's a great player. I mean, everything was deep, consistent. Like I said, he had a big serve, and you know we we start the match. Uh, by the way, I should say that I, I had asked him for consent about recording because I said I want some footage. Yeah, it's for absolutely myself. essential to ask before you record, for sure. Yes. I, I, I agree. I definitely mm -hmm. agree. Uh, okay. I, I felt that, you know, I should ask. And uh, and he was he was a he was a great guy. He was very chill. He was cool with it. And uh, I recorded because I felt like not just for the experience of having to play one of the one of the better players that I've ever played against, but just for general growth and improvement for myself. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we started, I think, uh, in, the, in the very first game, I, I served. Uh, I won the toss and I served because uh, I know he had a big serve. The strategy was it might be very hard to break him. So let me try to hold my own serve, get a little bit of momentum and confidence. And, yeah, I think uh, I won the first game, which felt great. You know, like, I was like, yes, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm in it, right? Yeah. I'm up 1-0. And then, um, and then he he held. He has a big serve. I was having a little bit of trouble returning, so I told myself, you know, just just somehow put the ball in play. Try to be ready, active on your feet uh, for the returns. And um, and the next game, uh, next game, I think I got I I got broken uh, because you know he's putting more balls in play. I 
the, here the big difference, you know, uh, and this is kind of something I took away from the match in the end. These guys have big serves and they get a lot of free points. Um, I don't have such a big serve. I have a pretty high percentage first serve, but a lot of it is relative to their pace. It's like medium pace. Uh, yeah. I put a lot of spin on it, uh, but it's just like, it's hard to get, you really need to get free points against these guys. Yeah, and that was that uh, kind of hard. So I lost. I got broken. I was down two one. He he held a uh, no. So I I had a very good return game in the next. Mm. So I I broke him. Um, mm. I played some. I played some really good defense in 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 the in that game where he served at two one up, and uh, just forced him. Just put an extra ball in play. Uh, and then there were a couple of mistakes, and I knew that against these players, you got to try to steal some games early on. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah. you know, you go yeah, three, exactly, the, yeah. three, three love down, four love down, then you're like, you lose momentum, or you yeah. kind of lose confidence, right? Yes. I was just hanging in there somehow. It was 3-2 to him. I was serving, and then I got broken. Uh, then it became hard. I played a few good points, actually. There's some footage. Um where you know it was it was uh, some good points and he was just like he hit he had a single-handed backhand so i was which i saw from my homework that he was actually super consistent yeah so for the serve i was going down i was hitting i was doing kick serves to his sing, single-handed backhand most of the time mm -hmm. which i thought was a, a decent strategy and it was working to some degree i just didn't have a big serve so i said that's how i would compensate right and uh yeah, he hit. He has a good forehand. Uh, everything is deep, like I said, and they have the ability to finish our balls when it's short, right? Yeah. And also, not only have they got big serves, they got good second serves. Some of his second serves were actually bigger than the first serve. And it's an incredible and, spin, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, and also has good hands of the net. So there's no real weakness. And they're and I should say they were meant to. They're also mentally strong. So again, one of the takeaways is when you're playing as like high level players, uh, UTR 11, 12, 13, they they have the ability to just turn it on when the points matter at the big points. I mean that's a huge thing that comes with experience. That comes from just being mentally tough, discipline, a lot of training, a lot of repetitions of different types of shots right so they know what to hit yeah i mean that was that's that's definitely a takeaway for me right yeah and uh it, it's just hard like i am pretty mentally strong myself i wasn't before but i've gotten to that stage because just i play a lot a lot of matches so i i never lost my control but uh, i lost the first set six two uh, which I thought was uh, maybe I could have gotten one more game, but it was more difficult to kind of mm -hmm. hold. Like even in the second set, for example, the very first game I served, it was like a 15 minute game where I, I had several game points and every time he was able to hit a big shot. Mm -hmm. So it always was, it was 40, 30, then it was deuce, then it was add in, then it was deuce, then it was added in again, then it was deuce, then it was add out. And then the add out, he <laughs> takes the, so it's that's yeah, basically it's, it's, the first game of the second set yeah. went like that. And then uh and then I don't know whether it was a second game or the fourth game. I was love 40 on his serve. Hmm. And he just hit two big aces, became 30-40, and then one amazing shot. And suddenly from love 40, I had three break points, it became deuce, and then he takes the next two game, next two points. Hmm. So it I think. I lost, I ended up losing 6 2 6 0. The second set was closer than the scoreline suggests, but I think he deserved it because he just played the big points well. He played better when he was down in a game. And that's just the experience, I think. Yeah. So, experience, yeah. And you trust overall, your shots, you trust your game. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. You just play a lot. You, you, you're disciplined. You practice a lot. You, you know when to turn it on, like I said. So overall, great experience in singles. Um, I don't think I'm too upset. I'm, uh, he was he was very well behaved. He was a very nice guy. Uh, I I took a picture with him in the end too. <laughs> See when he was very well. He was very you know, uh, just a very nice guy. And um, 
uh, I definitely t told him that I would tag him when we do an episode where we discuss our match. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so um, let's, uh, I, I believe, uh, let's look at a, one of the videos, one of the points that you guys played and it's, it's, it should be fun to see and dissect it. So let me share my screen quick. Yeah, All looking right. forward to uh, watching this. Actually, I mean, I yeah. think there are a couple of couple of points that we could probably uh, yeah. lo look through. Yeah, let's look at this. I think the angle is not ideal, but yeah, you can see the. All right, let's see. Soham is starting to serve. He pulled you out wide, and then he played excellent defense. That's right. I slice yeah. it here to the back yeah, end. And you then slice battle. Slice battle. It's a, yeah. And then, yeah, this, you just drop it slightly short and then he just took it. All right, let's 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 dissect it here. So what I want to see is, it's a nice open stance. And you see, he's hitting a very, very clean uh, forehand cross court. Correct. Yeah, and then you get into a slice battle. You You played a good point. I mean... I, so I what think, did you uh, feel about this? Yeah, I, I think you know, in this point, I think you played a very good point, but there were one or two moments in which, when the ball was slightly loose or slightly short, he was able to jump on it. Is what I felt, especially I the finishing point. Yeah, I mean, what uh, do you think? Yeah, two things is, yeah. um, I think I was looking at this video and I was like, okay, where where did I where did I um, yeah. Uh, I got into a slice battle. I could have, I could have hit a heavy backhand to his backhand, maybe, and then come yeah. in. Yeah, that's one area where instead of getting into a slice battle, I, mm -hmm. I could have done that. And the other thing is the second, second last point, um, where I hit a forehand, uh, short, kind of short. Yeah. Maybe it hit yeah. the three-four court or something where he just jumped on it and hit a winner cross court. Yeah, from a yeah. uh, um, kind of a central position. Central on the, I I should have hit a deeper ball cross court. Uh, it's just you can't hit short against these guys. He's he's super. Yeah. He's tall. He's like I don't know six three six four, mm -hmm. and you can you can just jump on those balls right. Anything short, it's gonna get yeah. punished. So I think it was a good point from from my end. But you, I just got to play these guys like more and more to be able to figure out what I shouldn't do on court. And for an example of what you should do, let me share another point. Uh, that you, It's an excellent point that Soham played. Let's see here. Probably one of those few points. <laughs> I think it's 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 it deserves to be called a highlight reel point. Can you see my screen here? Can you see the... I can, I can. Yep. Yeah, all right. Let's, uh, let's play this point out. All right, Soham is serving from the ad court. Yeah, that's the kick serve you're talking about to the backhand. Yeah, he lobs you, man. Your point is over here, but <laughs> oh, that, that's, this that's an was amazing lob running. Yeah, I hit it. I hit the yeah. ball back deep. Yep, and his backhand. Yeah, yeah, he got to it. He got to the drop, and you had him out of position. <laughs> you could get a clap from him too, man. That is an amazing point. I, I think uh, the biggest thing there is I, I changed it up a little bit. I uh -huh. uh, hit a drop shot, which my, yeah. he may not is. have been expecting there. Yeah. Uh, and then I moved. I mean, that's something that I don't always do. Yeah. Yes. I move instead of just standing there. That's, yep. you know, I'm trying to work on that a little bit. After the drop shot, you can't just stand there, right? Yes. You have I, would either stand, kind of, I, would either, I would either stand there or run back. So. I know what yeah, I would. So I, I kind of moved a little bit yeah. to take a better yeah. position. Yeah. And then I was able yeah. to put it away. So, yeah, it was a good point. I wish I had more yeah. of these points. But, you know, <laughs> one of those points where I feel like, yeah, I think I played yeah. that point uh, correctly. Yeah. 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 That, that was amazing. Especially the chasing down that lob. It was, it was the point was over when it was, when he had lobbed you and you, you were able to track it down. That requires yes. some good movement. Yeah. Actually, actually, uh, I think I shared it with uh, Alex and she said I'm moving a lot better. And yeah, I think I see that uh, a lot of, uh, you know, recent um, just training just to make sure that my footwork is better. I'm lighter on my feet and just the speed on court really helped me at that point because 
like I said earlier, fitness is so important, and uh, you need to you need to be really like fit to be able to compete with these higher higher uh, level. Players. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, I definitely hundred percent agree with that. Uh, that I mean, as I, I mean, as the cliche saying goes, I mean. You can't play tennis to get fit. You have to be fit before to play tennis. It, it's very tough, especially singles. Yeah, and I think one of the things I was looking when uh, I I recorded the whole match, so I was looking at like like the match by frame by frame almost, and I was trying to see how was my footwork throughout the match because one of the things I was working on pre this tournament was making sure that I am always ready and prepared in position, hitting the ball in front. Not being late and anticipated, anticipating where the ball was going to go to, so it's uh, it's helped me a lot training with people like Alex and some of my friends who are pretty good high level players themselves, and uh, it's paying dividends. I got to keep doing it. You got to be disciplined. You have to be very dynamic in your approach, and uh, generally, I'm very excited to be playing, uh, playing at this at this level and competing. And yeah, I need to get. Better now. I should mention that I may. I my friend has the clips for the doubles. We we had a we had a doubles match the following day. Um, we lost six two six three against two nine plus uh, rated UTR uh, in dubs. They are they are five o solid five o C rated NTRP players. Um, they're actually prime. I would say. They play with singles really well, so I think they're a little bit better in singles than doubles. But uh, I think in that match, my partner and I got a little bit tight. We we made some mistakes uh, in shots that we usually make, and this is when nerves come in, right? And it's not like I'm playing with my partner for the first time. We have played a lot of matches together, so the synergy synergy was there, but our execution was a little bit. Uh, poor. Okay. Because we Happens, have played, yeah. we have played in the same tournament last year. We played two UTR eleven players who are D one players from Brown University, and we lost six to six to. And I think we played actually pretty well. That's a respectable loss to. That's people. a good result. Yeah, yeah. That's not a bad result. And this one, two UTR nines. I think we expected to maybe take it to three sets, and we were not able to execute. So we need to clean up a little bit, a few things there. You know, you gotta, you gotta press. You gotta like, you gotta uh, rush to the net, and you gotta play from the net a lot, right? Yeah. Especially against singles players, like they can bang from the back. Uh, you gotta attack them at the net, and I think we got opportunities, but I, I think we made a few mistakes. Um, it could be nerves. It could be, you know, we had to wait for a few hours. We also had to drive like an hour and a half to get to the location. It's uh, but no excuses. I think the other team just played more consistent. Uh, I wish I had some footage to share. I think in one of our future episodes, I think we should ex- we would ex- we would like to exclusively talk a little bit more about doubles, double strategy, and whatnot. Because what I learned to in terms of even watching some of the teams play doubles, right, mm-hmm. is you got to take control at the net. I mean. People can ban- junior pe- junior players can hit big from the back, but experienced double players and can beat that strategy by just they just read the shot and close it with the net. Yeah, yeah, you have to have good hands. You got to be able to put away shots, and uh, yeah. you can only do so much damage from the back, right? So, uh, I was able to see some doubles, um, not a, not a lot. I saw more singles than doubles, but again, some amazing. Players with great hands, yep. especially you know, at so, the net. Yep. And and I must say, mm-hmm. I, I spoke about playing well at the net, but generally, I've seen some of the doubles players at a high level have very good serves. Mm-hmm. So it when you're, you you so you you hold easily because you have big serves or you have serves where you're you're just working with your partner and giving them easy putaways at the net. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that you can gen- you can create more pressure when you're receiving. Yep. If you're if you don't have that big serve and you're getting broken, it's much much harder to win a doubles match yeah. at a high level. Yeah. It's true. So, it's true. what's the theme here? Mm-hmm. Singles or doubles, you have to have a good serve. Yep. Yeah. 
All right, Soham, we are coming to, to the end. And let me, this reminds me of you know, post-match player press conferences. And we were able to get a good interview out of you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel, I feel almost like a, a, a top level player, which I'm not. I think we we should really interview Alex, uh, Alex and Craig for the, that, because they 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 have both played college level tennis. Uh, Alex at Saint Mary's and uh, um, Craig played at where did where did Craig play? I think he played at Purdue or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Penn State, I'm, Penn State, Penn State. Craig yeah. played at Penn State. So they know the college level scene. Uh, Alex definitely knows some of the pro level scene. I, I'm just talking from a limited experience of playing at these opens, which hey, you know. Hey, so it's so relatable for our audience, man, because a lot of people are. I mean, they are playing. A lot of people are playing league tennis. You know, we have junior competitive players. Their parents. This is like excellent yeah. information, and especially yeah, as yeah, you yeah. go through. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll yeah. just say one more. One more thing is, you know, for me at least. I am so much more excited to play tournaments and leagues because of the, not just the crowd, but the level of play. I feel like league is a little bit more recreational, which is great, right? It's it's great. I mean, it's it's more, maybe more social uh, and all that. But tournament is, like we said, you said earlier, and I may have mentioned too, the vibe is very different. People are way more serious and competitive over there. And, you know, they're there to win. They're not there to just necessarily socialize and have fun. So I like the tournament uh, environment more. And I get a lot. I, I think I also do a lot more due diligence and homework and yeah. just preparation for tournaments. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just, uh, <coughs> it just, excuse me, it motivates me a lot more to play these tournaments. And I, I, I would love to play more and share some of my insights from my matches going in the future. That's awesome. And folks, with that, we come to the end of episode 11. Uh, and uh, again, I will start, restart, uh, end with the marketing spiel. Like, like, end, like how we started. You Please, please, please share, like, subscribe, comment at all our social handles. It is at Tennis Hackery with a Y. Uh, we are on Instagram. We are on Facebook. We are on x we are our podcasts go on spotify and of course the video recording will go on our youtube channel at tennis hackery with a y is our handle and see you next time bye all right bye guys <laughs>